At tonight's second intermission, we're back and joined for our Days in Intermission interview by former Blackhawks defenseman and NASCAR racer Michael Annette. Welcome back to Young Arena. I guess this has to bring back a lot of memories. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, I have so many great memories of this place. Uh, started off with looking across the ice at that, at that Clark Cup banner. Um, it's just, uh, it's been way too long that, to make uh, my parents uh, coming back here, but it's been a lot of fun so far. The, uh, the atmosphere is the same or better than it's uh, like it's always been. So it's uh, these games uh, you know, and these fans are probably the best in this league. Now, you have a very special memory when you, you think back. It seems like everybody does of, of winning the Clark Cup. You were in the lineup that night. Tell us your perspective on those final seconds as they rolled off the clock. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been in a lot of NASCAR tracks now and heard a lot of a lot of loud fans, but this place, uh, that's uh, the loudest atmosphere I've ever been in my life. I've hit those last few minutes. You couldn't even hear your heartbeat, hear yourself think. It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. And just remember trying to... Trying to hang. I was on the bench watching, uh, you know, the last minute there, and just try, hoping those guys got the puck out of the zone, and they did. And and then uh, when that buzzer went off, uh, all hell broke loose. Now you played another year with the Blackhawks after that, before moving into racing. What made the decision for you after two seasons in the USHL? I think the biggest thing was, uh, you know, I was five nine, uh, you know, 185 pounds. Not the best uh, stats to to have a career going to the NHL unless you're a hell of a, a skater and goal scorer. And I definitely wasn't either of those. Uh, um, you know, just I p- tr- played my game to my best ability, just real consistent defenseman, and kind of was going to be on the path to go play D3 probably for four years, get an education, then go uh, go get a regular job. And and uh, I kind of grown up in racing before I started playing hockey, and some uh, some opportunities arose to be able to to pursue that dream that I that I always had, and and uh, just we took that opportunity as about. Two weeks after we lost to Chicago in the first round of the playoffs, uh, I was in a I was in a race car uh, practicing and testing. So, um, you know, I, I don't miss uh, or I, I miss every moment of it. I don't regret any second of, of the career path I've taken with do, you know playing hockey and racing. There's a lot of kids that are racing that were in a go kart from age five all the way up through their career. And I you know there's not a lot of people that get to say they they won a Clark Cup in the USHL and now they're driving in the Nationwide Series. What do your former Blackhawks teammates think of your racing? I know that uh, that that Clark Cup team certainly was very close. I'm sure that you stayed in contact with many of them. Uh, what, what do they say to you about uh, seeing you on TV now on Saturday? Yeah, they still really can't believe it. Uh, that's one cool thing about you know Facebook and Twitter. It's so much easier to keep in touch with those old teammates. And and there's been um, you know a few of them living in Charlotte. We have an AHL team. And uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to go down and watch games of Fornatero, the Tessweed brothers come down, Raja. Um, and so I've been able to, to watch them play and go out to dinner afterwards. And, and those, uh, I think that's the coolest part of those two years of being here was the, the friendships and relationships you built, uh, you know, playing with those guys, living with them pretty much, uh, you know, the whole year. You, know, you leave the arena from practice and you go somewhere else someone's house and, and play PlayStation or play cards and, and yeah, you really just become like brothers. This year in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, you finished fifth. Would you consider it a breakthrough season? I, I definitely think it's a breakthrough season. Um, you know, we're in this business to win trophies, though. We need to win races, but uh, if you look at the past three years to what we were able to do this year, I definitely uh, I, I think it was a breakout year. Now it's uh, it's kind of just up to us to, to go out next year and prove that it wasn't a fluke season, and, and like I said, I start winning some trophies. A couple of third place finishes this year at uh, Daytona and Dover. What was the highlight of the season for you? Uh, definitely getting that first top. I never had a top five until Kentucky this year. We uh, finished fourth, and and just to get that monkey off my back, and and then we backed it up with getting a third at Daytona. Um, Daytona, yeah, it's a different style of racing. It's not, you know, your typical mile and a half or short track. A lot of luck's involved, but, um, you know, just those are such hallowed grounds for our sport. And uh, be able to push the three car across the line and, and come home third uh, there in the July race under the lights, uh, that's uh, probably one of my favorite parts of the year. Uh, racing for Richard Petty, what's it like uh, with, with the legend, with the name? I think everybody knows no matter what they know about racing, everybody knows Richard Petty. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that's one cool part when he said he wanted to run the 43 on the car. I said, all right, well, we already gained, you know, thousands of fans just because I'm going to, you know, have that, that, that number on the door. Everybody, you know, they, they recognize that number in the 3 and the 24. So, um, it, it just, there's a lot to live up to, though. Uh, he, he's a winner, so we need to be a winner, too. But um, to, to walk into the shop every day and, and see that big cowboy hat, 
have uh, Dale Inman, another Hall of Famer. You know, there's not too many teams that have two Hall of Famers um, sitting there in, in the, off the main office when you walk through the door. So uh, I pinch myself every day and, and uh, just ready to live up to uh, what that 43 means in our sport. Finally, Michael, I think a question a lot of Blackhawks fans have, have wondered, especially those that uh, follow NASCAR to some degree but maybe not uh, watching every weekend. Is there an opportunity in the near future for you to make this Cup Series start in the Sprint Cup Series uh, at maybe one of those big races like the Brickyard 400 where there's a, a lot on the line? Yeah, yeah, we talked about it. We had a couple of meetings knowing that everybody kind of goes and does their own thing for the holidays and we want to get some of that buttoned up. Um, the biggest thing is we want to keep our rookie status for when I do go full-time, so we got to keep it under seven. We've kind of looked at four or five tracks that we ran really well at this past year, um, places like Chicago and, and Daytona, Richmond, places like that, that we know I have a lot of confidence in. So, um, you know, confidence is huge in, in what I do, and, and um, you know, we're going to look at that. And unfortunately, uh, in our sport, you got to have money to be able to play. So uh, I'm fortunate enough to have the sponsor, um, you know, Pilot Flying J and people like Eric Peterson and Northland Oil, a Waterloo-based company uh, that support us uh, when we race at Iowa Speedway. So. Um, yeah, it, it's people like that that allow me to do what we do each weekend, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that that gets us a, a few races next year and be able to go full time the following year. Let me ask you one more after, after all. Uh, with uh, the Blackhawks going late into the playoffs last year, then starting early going to the uh, World uh, Junior Club World Cup, and thank you by the way from all the Blackhawks for your support of the team in that effort. It wasn't. It was a very short off season for Waterloo. I know it's going to be a short one for you too. How long before you're back on, at the track and starting to test for February? Yeah, the biggest thing is we got to wait for it to warm up a little bit. Uh, when I uh, actually when I left North Carolina to come up here, it was colder in, in Charlotte than it was when I landed in Des Moines. So. Uh, we just need it to be warm for us to be able to learn anything. Uh, I think we're, we're going to shoot for middle uh, middle of January and go find some checks that, that we felt like we could we could benefit the most from places we might struggle a little bit last year. So uh, we'll, we'll do that, and hopefully uh, we're going to be fighting for a championship next year. Thanks very much, Michael. Best of luck. All right, thank you. Former Waterloo Blackhawks defenseman and current NASCAR Nationwide Series driver Michael Annette.